high and welcome in 3.10 almost maximum possible IIQ Ice Shot Magic Find build. Keep in mind that this is a standard league build made with legacy items, but it's still possible to do a similar build on the temporary leagues just with lower item quantity values. Since it's a standard league, it can utilize items from 3.9 patch metamorph league, like Catalysts, that have just merged with standard league few days ago and it actually cannot use any items from 3.10 delirium league, like cluster tree jewels, which will merge with standard after the league ends, so it's always one league behind. As you can see, compared with older build video, I've switched from Tornado Shot skill, which I was using in 3.9 and now I'm using Ice Shot only. It really feels much better and stronger, also I have a feeling that I'm getting more Wind Reaper Freeze bonus, because I suspect that the secondary Tornado Shot projectiles may not have been meeting the cold damage amount threshold to freeze some of the rare or unique monsters with bigger life pool, but this is only just my theory. If you still want to use Tornado Shot, you can just swap the Ice Shot gem with Tornado Shot, because whole build scales pretty much the same, so it's totally convertible and it takes just a moment to do so, but Ice Shot feels so much better that I don't expect going back to Tornado Shot ever again. Current version is not low tier maps only anymore, like the previous one, now it feels stronger and T14 plus maps are possible to do, I'm still struggling with some stronger bosses, but compared to older version I really feel that I've made a big progress, but of course there's still a lot to do to make it better. Main 6 link skill for map clearing is Ice Shot connected to greater multiple projectiles, I don't have the Awakener version yet, but I'm working on it. Awakened elemental damage with attacks, Awakened added cold damage, Note that the Awakener version of this gem, level 5, gives plus 1 to active cold skill gems, which is the Ice Shot gem in this case, so it's a really good synergy and one of the reasons I've stopped using Tornado Shot. Next gem is increased item quantity. Last gem is Hypothermia, which works really well for me because Ice Shot skill is always chilling enemies, so I'm getting the massive more damage bonus from it all the time. Just in case you didn't know, more damage mods scales way better than the increased damage mods. I've also tested other gems instead of Hypothermia, and the ones that I think are quite good are Mirage Archer for fast pub clearing and damage on full life, which adds 59 more damage on full life, but for me Hypothermia is the best one, mainly because of the freeze chance for magic find bonus. I'm using this setup on my Grid's Embrace chest, which is the only body armor that gives 15% quantity and also 50% item rarity. Secondary 6 link is for single target monsters and bosses, and this is basically almost the same gem setup as the first 6 link, but the only difference is barrage support gem instead of greater multiple projectiles. By the way, don't do this mistake and don't buy level 21 version of it, because there's no difference between 20 and 21, until you get plus 1 to this gem somehow, so it's level 22, which would result in minus 1% less damage. Minus 1% may not seem like too much, but at min max character, this 1% scales really good and makes a big difference. Hypothermia gem is perfect here, because it increases the chill effect, which really helps to slow down and tank bosses. These gems are socketed on my bow, which is a legacy wind reaper, but don't worry if you don't have a legacy version, it's not a big difference, and you wouldn't start dropping exiles and mirrors just by getting the legacy one. Quiver is Rigwald's Quills, it's really great mainly because of the fork bonus, which is OP for mapping, and it has point blank implicit mod, which lets me free the point blank skill passive from the skill tree and use it elsewhere. I'm also not that sure if plus one projectile would be that good for me, as every additional projectile slows down attack while using barrage support for single target, and for me single target is more important than map clear speed. For power charges generation source I'm using the old good Herald of Ice plus curse on hit plus assassin's mark combo, of course linked to another IIQ gem, so I don't lose any IIQ bonus from enemies shattered with this Herald. Keep in mind, that there's a Wakened version of Curse on Hit gem, but I still don't have it. These gems are socketed in the helmet, which is a rare lion pelt with 20% quant and a lot of life, which is very important in this kind of builds, so you don't die all the time, since magic find builds usually use some weak items. At least mine do, because quantity is my priority, not the damage or clear speed, but they are of course also very important. My other auras are Hatred and Precision, connected with Enlightened level 4, for less mana reserved, so I can level up the Precision Aura to level 13 without any mana problems. My movement skill is Blink Arrow. 
Perfect blink arrow combo would be connected with faster attacks, faster projectiles that also speeds up the teleportation, the new second wind support and the IQ jam. Currently I'm not using any of them because I don't have any free sockets, but if you prefer a faster movement skill, you can drop and lighten and precision gems and use two of those ones I've mentioned. It's a personal preference here. I'm doing good with just blink arrow and no support gems and it works fine, even when I'm hunting the Valwind's corrupting tempest, but of course they would be very helpful. These gems are on the legacy unique Sadima's touch gloves with maximum 24% quantity possible on this item slot. Good option is to mirror a 20% IIQ rare gloves, which are much stronger, but then you lose 4% quant. I don't have a mirror to get the rare gloves and I think I prefer the unique ones because this build is intended to achieve as much IIQ as it's possible without any compromises. The enchant is of Fury, which is, from what I know, the best one for bow builds, but maybe some other ones are good too. My defensive skill is currently Steel Skin level 18, triggered by cast when damage taken level 14. You can change these gems levels, but keep in mind that the level requirements of them must match, so the skill trigger is possible. If you mismatch them, the Steel Skin will just not trigger at all. My offensive damage buff is Val Haste and I really recommend you to use it because it's really strong. Note that I'm not using normal Haste Aura which would reserve mana, I'm only using the temporary Val version when I catch enough Val Souls to do so and it really helps with bosses and also with faster mapping as it buffs not only attack speed but also movement speed. Thanks to my CDR Magic Find build guide which made me use this great buff. By the way, he also runs the most popular mirror shop with the best IQ items in the game, so if you need them, you know where to go. Both of these defensive and offensive skills are connected to increase duration support gem, so they last longer. They're in the legacy unique Goldworm boots, which gives 30% IQ and it's the maximum possible value on this slot. It's the same situation like with gloves. You can get rare ones with 20% quant and you get more life, movement speed and damage, but it would also sacrifice 10% IQ. I prefer pushing it into extreme IQ and I doubt if I would use the rare ones even if I could afford them. Because of the fact that they grant only 10% movement speed, the enchant is also the 10% movement speed to mitigate this problem a bit. The amulet is a rare 20% IQ one with tier 1 life mod and constitution anoint to increase life even more. The amulet with some luck can be converted into spinefuse talisman in the syndicate at Jorgin in research, which would grant additional 10% IQ on the implicit, resulting with 30% IQ on this slot. This 10% IQ here is the only 10% that I am actually missing to have the maximum possible quantity value in the game. The only other sources of IQ right now are increased effect of flask with Pathfinder Ascendancy, but this is the only temporary buff when the IQ flask is active and the other theoretical source is on the rings with 5% IQ Val implicit, but it would require a 20% IQ level 84 ring base, but from what I know, they just don't exist in the game or they are just on some inactive accounts, so right now they are most likely impossible to get. Talking of rings, my rings are rare items with maximum 20% IQ for this slot and tier 1 life mods. In future I'd like to mirror some good 20% IQ rings, but there are so many other things to do that I can't do it now. Belt is a headhunter because it's the most enjoyable and crazy item in this game and gives so much fun that I just can't stop using it since I've started. People love it or hate it. I'm in the first group and that's why it's the only item slot that I sacrificed IQ for better fun and build power. Now it is possible to upgrade belts as well as amulets and rings with catalysts that increases quality which buffs the specific item mods. I don't have them yet, they are still quite expensive, but the ones I will go for are Fertile Catalysts to increase the life pool. Max possible IQ on the belt slot would be a string of servitude with 15% IQ and no other stats. Another option is a legacy 12% IQ Perendus Blazon and if you somehow manage to get the level 84 legacy version and be lucky enough to hit 5% IQ corruption implicit you would have 17% but I'm not sure if this kind of belt even exists and you would really need a lot of luck to get it. Perfect option for me would be a headhunter with 5% IQ implicit and this is my goal. 
go. Because of the grid's embrace minus 20% movement speed penalty and poor 10% movement speed on the boots, I try to get some more of it wherever it's possible, so I am using Cinder Swallow Urn with a movement speed bail mode and the flask itself grants onslaught that has additional 20% movement speed. It's not visible on the flask itself, but you can see it on the tooltip. Another flask is the Quicksilver one, also for movement speed, and it has bleed immunity suffix. I will swap it for the one with freeze immunity mode as soon as I'll get corrupted blood cannot be inflicted implicit on one of my skill tree jewels. I'm still working on it, but no luck yet. This jewel implicit is a must have for every PUE build. Third flask is a divination distillate for IAQ and IOR bonus. Never increase quality of this flask because you cannot make it back and it will decrease effectiveness of flask effect duration. It would just last shorter as it would regenerate more life and mana in the same amount of time and when it's fully recovered the flask effect would end faster. Some players say that this flask can only work good with some special setups but I don't want to sacrifice too much to get more of its effect and even when it lasts from time to time it's still very rewarding in my opinion. This flask also grants plus 6% to maximum resistances, but currently my overcapped resistances are not as high to benefit fully from all of this 6%. If you want to solve this problem, use the Wise Oak flask, as it would overcap resistances to get this bonus, and with the cold resistance being the highest, it would also give additional 20% cold penetration. For now, I'm not using the Wise Oak flask in favor of the Legacy Ad Series Promise, and grants 2% Chaos Damage Leached as life, which greatly helps with survivability and boss tanking. I really like the Wise Oak Flex too, I was using it in my 3.9 version, and maybe I will start using it again in future. Last flask is Bottled Faith, it gives a lot of damage, and creates very large AoE consecrating ground that also greatly helps to survive in hard situations. This is just my personal flask setup preference and I think it's really a free choice here, depending on what do you like and which gameplay style do you prefer. Personally, I like the piano style drunken master flask spamming all the time, so I really care about them to be good. I may be making a mistake here, but I'm not using Dying Sun Flask for a plus 2 projectiles, because actually, like I've mentioned before with the Quiver, the Barrage Support Gem gets 5% less attack speed per projectile, so it would be good for my mapping with Ice Shot skill supported with greater multiple projectiles, but not that good for bossing while supported by Barrage Support. My strongest skill tree jewel is Watcher's Eye Jewel with plus percent to critical strike chance while affected by hatred, which is really good especially for Wind Reaper. Of course I could get a better Watcher's Eye in future. Other jewels are Legacy Searching Eye ones with as much life, damage and resistances as I could get, and some classic square rare jewels also with life, damage and resistances. I try to double corrupt the non-legacy classic jewels, so I don't rip any of the legacy searching I ones, but so far I wasn't lucky to get the corruption blood immunity mod that I've mentioned before. On the skill tree I try to get as much life as I can. Other important things like I've mentioned before is movement speed, so I have fleet food, quick step and fangs of the viper allocated and they all together grant additional 22% of it. Dropping point blank on the tree, which I have on the quiver implicit, now lets me get another 5% increased flask effect, so I am having both of these points now, which results in 10% increased flask effect. This is really great because it buffs all effects of the flask, so the divination distillate 25% IQ is now actually 27%. Another important notable is Fangs of Frost that grants 8% cold penetration, 30% increased cold damage and 10% increased effect of chill that helps with slowing down bosses same as the Hypothermia gem. My Ascendancy is Deadeye and I took Ricochet for plus 1 chain, Endless Munitions for plus 1 projectile, Gathering Winds for increased movement and attack speed from Tailwind and Farshot which mitigates the point blank penalty with long range attacks. My major pantheon god is Soul of Lunaris mainly for physical damage reduction which is a weak point of this build and the minor god is Soul of Shakari for poison immunity. Bandit's quest status is Help Alira for additional plus 15% to all elemental resistances and a nice 20% crit strike multiplier. My mapping ice shot setup with 21-23 IAQ gem has 194% flat quant and 49% rarity and with wind reaper bonuses and divination distillate flask effect additional temporary 27 plus 25% quant 
and 59 plus 50 rarity, which gives total numbers of 246 quantity and 158 rarity. Values on a single target ice shot setup are almost the same, as the IQ gem is just 2120 and there are 245% IQ and 158 rarity, so there is only 1% IQ difference. My mapping skill GMP setup tooltip shows 38k 319 damage and with all flasks active it shows 54k 619. On the single target barrage support setup it shows 92k 254 damage and with flasks active it's 131k 201. Keep in mind that for hypothermia more damage against chilled enemies it's not shown on the tooltip and it's a really big damage boost. In-game tooltips are not always accurate and sometimes they just don't show all the stats so I recommend you to rather check your build in Path of Building program than in the game. My resistances are 75, 76, 75 and with all flasks up they are 76, 82, 75. So as you can see and as I mentioned before I'm not taking full benefits from plus 6% to all resistances from Divination Distillate. Physical damage reduction is only 3% which is a weak side of this build, chance to dodge attacks is 30% chance to evade attacks is 29% and with Tailwind active, which require just to use any skill, it's 43%. Life pool is 6k68, but keep in mind that I haven't applied fertile catalysts on the jewelry yet and it would increase it a bit. Sadly, when I try to do some very juicy 8 modded fully sextanted and quad ivory watchstones and quad scarab maps, the loot is so big that my PC just cannot handle it and frames are dropping so much that it's almost unplayable, so I just need a better PC to fully use the potential of this build because this what you see now happens. I really hope to upgrade my computer soon to reveal the full potential of this character. So this is basically it, here are some clips from various maps and bosses to show how this build performs on the higher maps. I'm gonna do the next version of it for sure because it's my favorite build that I have and I'm investing all my currency that I earn into it, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video, Exiles!